Mr. John Wheel, you have eight minutes. Thank you very much, Coherlock. And I would particularly like to welcome the Minister to the House and commend him on what I believe is an excellent bill. Um, I think he's been doing tremendous work in that department, and this is another example, another, uh, another uh, good tranche of legislation, which I think will have a significant bearing and an impact on what we're all here uh, hoping to achieve, is to reduce the deaths and fatalities and the horrendous carnage that can, can, can happen on our roads with uh, terrible outcomes for families in terms of tragedies and traumas and uh, years of rehabilitation needed in some cases. We, it's some, some, some real sad and tragic stories and I think the Minister has been commended. This is a very comprehensive and constructive bill and wide-ranging and I think it will lead to, to better driving, safer driving and safer and better vehicles on the road. Um, it is, of course, against the backdrop, unfortunately, of uh, uh, a situation where last year we had this uh, unfortunate upsurge in the number of fatalities, up to 190, an increase of 28 on the previous year. And hopefully it is not uh, the start of a, of a new pattern and that it is just, a, if you like, a road bump or a glitch um, due to whatever reason and that it can be addressed and that we can, uh, at the outset of this year, we're still in January, hopefully we can make strong inroads this year to getting the numbers back down. And I think uh, this legislation will contribute and assist towards that. Um, while it's not embodied in this bill, I think it's important, uh, out of the Minister's Department, I want to commend them for an ongoing commitment to rural transport. I think it's very important that people maybe can leave their cars at home in rural areas and, and use public transport like the rural transport system. Uh, I know that new, a new announcement was made on that this week. Also, another initiative which I welcome from his department is the uh, introduction of a rural ha hackney licence. This can only help, but while we have made tremendous progress in moving away from the culture of drink driving, it's important also to remove away the temptation. And I think if we do have a rural hackney system, it can help uh, businesses in isolated areas uh, to provide a service for their customers and clients which will deter people and offer an alternative, an alternative to them thinking that they'll chance it or whatever, that they've only had a few, which of course is a, can be fa famous and fatal last words. And while we have made tremendous progress, I do remember a time within my own time where people left pubs full to the gills at 10 o'clock at night when, when, when you had Sunday closing at 10 o'clock to drive to somewhere else for a bar extension. And that car park would then empty out at 2 a.m. in the morning, and you'd wonder where did everyone go? So, you know, we have made significant progress in terms of the culture and attitude, and it's no longer acceptable. People, you would be frowned on, and rightly so, if, if someone picked up their keys to go driving out of a, out of a licensed premises now with, with drink on board. Uh, nevertheless, I just note that today it's just announced, the Gardaí have just announced that there were 805 arrests for drink driving, over the Christmas period. <coughs> so while we have made tremendous progress, we still have a ways to go. And Minister, I think uh, there has been some very constructive and positive uh, contributions from, from Senator O'Neill and, and, and the other senators on the other side of the House and Senator Donovan. But I actually beg to differ with Senator, uh, Senator uh, on the other side of the House, Senator Sullivan, in relation to, I beg your pardon, uh, in relation to uh, uh, Gay Bourne, the chairman of the uh, Road Safety Association. I think it's his job to step up and stand up and say what he thinks. And the minister is big enough and brave enough to accept constructive criticism and observation. I don't see it as being at odds. I think Gay Byrne is doing his job, and rightly so. Who, who wants a lapdog in such an important role? And it's up to him to make the observations that he thinks are correct. And I think I've heard Minister Varadkar Radker out on the media on this, and he, um, he, he said he's taken... Um, Gay Burns views into account and into consideration in good faith. I don't see it as being a question of a personality contest or any loggerheads. And I think uh, we all will be better off for a minister who will be receptive and responsive to those kind of robust and uh, honest observations. Because I too would like to, to observe that it, I think one of the, the important parts of, of our success is the penalty point system and a dedicated uh, traffic core. But let's be honest about it, I ha the traffic core has not been as visible in recent months as it had been prior to that. And you know, we, we, we are working with uh, 
uh, in, in a time of, 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 of short and straightened resources. But we would ask that the Minister within Cabinet, because he, there's a collective responsibility, that we, would, that we have to ensure that the traffic core is not undermined in terms of resourcing or man hours or overtime when it's necessary for them to be out there, because not everyone will comply. Enforcement is a key part of the success that the Minister and his predecessors have, have had in reducing road debts. And also, I'd have to say, in terms of, the, let's be honest, the quality of vehicle that the traffic corps have at their disposal. If speeding is an issue, and it is an issue, and the Minister has identified it as so, it's important, therefore, that the, the road traffic corps have vehicles that are comparable with those that are trying to deter and to, 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 to curb speeding. There's no point in a, in a Garda a, a, a team uh, trotting along behind a high-powered vehicle in a Garda van. And, and, and there is some of that abroad as well. We have to g g show the Garda uh, some respect and make sure they're resourced and that the visibility in enforcement is a key factor in the success. It's not the only factor, that's for sure, but it is a factor. And Senator O'Neill also makes another point in relation to the, the penalty points. I think it's, it's, it's important. The new range of, of penalty point system and the, the manner in which they're being applied that the Minister is introducing are to be commended. But it's important that the penalty point system is taken seriously and it's, it's taken with respect that the, the, the imposition of points is prorated to the nature of the offence and that it's accepted as so. And that you know, I, I myself want to put my hand up that uh, I, I have been guilty in the past of, 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 of speeding of perhaps uh, in relation to maybe driving while on the phone. And I want to ask colleagues today, and I'm, I don't want to sound anyway pious in relation to this, but that when that happens, we should be, again, politicians should show leadership, and we should put our hands up and take the hit and accept our responsibility and not be going around looking for favours and seeking privilege. And I think it's absolutely a crying shame to see politicians seeking to have penalty points quashed. I think that's an absurdity, and to come in here to the House then and to be going on to the Minister about fatalities and road traffic and, and about enforcement, and then going and speaking with, out of the other side of our mouths. So I, I'm, not, I'm applying that to myself and to everyone else, and we should lead by showing good example. And finally, Cahirlock, you've indicated uh, that this, the, the Minister has indicated this is the 10th anniversary in 2012 of the penalty point system. But uh, preceding that, is a provision which I would ask the Minister to consider in his office as, as a Minister of Cabinet, and perhaps it's something that could be put to the Constitutional Convention if in its continuance. Is there any scope any longer in a modern, open, transparent and confident democracy where politicians can invoke the privilege of the Constitution to avoid arrest on the basis that they're travelling to or from the houses of the Oireachtas to the Dáil or the Shannon? That provision is in the Constitution for good reason at, at, at the time that it was introduced. But it harks back to an archaic uh, provision and it harks back, let's be honest, to a civil war time. Now surely we have moved on here, both politically and legislatively, and we can be more mature and confident these days. And why should politicians be any different before the law than anyone else? And if we want people to respect and abide by the law, Minister, we ourselves should lead by example. And I would ask you to consider that provision. It's, it's Article 1513, so it's not something that you yourself can address within the bill. But it is something that the government could certainly look at as a referendum, as it were, down the road at the appropriate time. Thanks very much, Minister.